start screaming? <laughs> start screaming, yeah, right.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we're going to learn a new tune this morning. The first hymn. I don't believe, according to Steve, I don't believe that Christ Church used this tune, but it's number 57. I wanted to run over it before we sign it. Colleen, could you play through it once? And then it's we're going to sing it three parts. That's the first verse.
this morning in our Advent study group. We're looking at the Bible, background to it, theological insights into it, and it really was wonderful to sing it with you. So that's you. Thank you. Happy New Year, everyone, because this is the first Sunday of Advent, and this is the beginning of the church year. You will notice also that we're no longer looking at the book of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, we're looking at the Gospel of Mark. So for the next year, we'll be looking at Mark. And my phone is just ringing, and I told you to be quiet. My apologies. We also have had difficulty with our broadcasting. We can't get the sound to connect to the laptop, so we're using the camera's mic, so those watching online hope you can hear us, but it is not as good as we hope it to be, but welcome with us, including Deacon Debbie, who is uh, at home today with COVID, and uh, please bear with me as I'm short-staffed during the service. We start our service of Advent, first Sunday of Advent, with a confession of sin. So let us, in God's presence, be still and recognize our sin that we bring to Him. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. And we pray together. Most, Most merciful God, God we, confess we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please be seated because we're going to light our first Advent candle, and Ethan is going to do it. First, before he lights it, we're going to say a little piece of liturgy. Uh, each week we'll be doing this, uh, and today's the candle is for hope, so it's on your purple sheet. As the season of Advent begins, we celebrate hope. We know that. Through the birth of a tiny and helpless child, God is coming to save the world. While we watch and wait for Jesus to arrive, we join in God's mission by bringing grace and mercy to those who need it most. Together, we are a sign of God's hope for the world. And we light our first candle on the Advent wreath. Well done. So let us pray. We pray together. God of surprising grace, when we least expect it, you bring a to new life. And when we feel that all is lost, you bring a new death. Give us courage as we share all you have done, all you are doing, and all you will accomplish through Jesus Christ. Amen. And back to our worship bulletin. Please stand. As we wait for the promise, as we long for the King. Prepare the way, Christ is coming. Emmanuel, God with us. And we say together, Holy God, Holy and mighty, Holy and mortal one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. And this is the collect on the first Sunday of Advent. And I'm going to ask you to read it with me. It's the contemporary version. You will find it on your scripture bulletin, beginning with Almighty God. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light, now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came and visit us with great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come in with his glorious majesty, the judge will the living and the dead, we may rise to life and mortal. sing the Gloria, uh, so we're going to have our Bible reading, so please be seated for the readings from Scripture. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence when you did awesome deeds that we did not expect you came down the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who's unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There's no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of it. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are potter. We are the work of your hand. Do not ex be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is sections, two sections of Psalm 8-0. We'll read this responsibly by whole verse. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth. You that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of the cherubim, Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come unto the palace. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with the silent prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You may give us the vision of our neighbors, and our enemies that us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man for the right hand, the son of man who made us so long as we stop. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord, our God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. Grace to you and peace 
from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you've been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Bart. You're welcome. During Advent, we will be using hymn 56 for our sequence hymn. We will be singing three verses each time, but today we're singing verses 1 and 2 before the gospel and verse 3 following the reading. So it's Hymn number 56, we stand to sing. <laughs> say to you, I say to all, keep awake. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said this. There will be wars and rumors of wars. And every generation that I can think of that goes through turmoil, wars and rumors of wars, believes that Jesus is going to return. And we can look at the news. But all of the turmoil in Ukraine, in Gaza, so many other things have happened. I was looking at the news this morning, there were earthquakes, there were shootings, there were killings, stabbings. In the midst of all this, what are we to do? Jesus is in control. He is sovereign. St. Francis knew that. And so he was able to keep on going. He wasn't paralyzed with what was happening around him. He wasn't depressed. Then Jesus gives a sign. You know the fig tree. And every farmer must have picked up his ears. And every gardener, yeah, we know the fig tree. When 
the branches become tender and they send out their leaves, then you know, you know that summer is near. But no one knows the day or the hour of when Jesus will return. But Jesus said, be, keep alert. Keep alert like the farmer who's always watching the fig tree to see when the time is changing. It's a sign of when things are going to happen. And so the signs that Jesus gave were what's happening in the sun and the moon and the earth. And a lot of these times, in ancient times, they would have considered the heavenly bodies as representing kingdoms and authorities on earth. <laughs> And so whenever they saw that there was chaos in the heavens, they would have said, well, there's going to be chaos on earth. Jesus was going to send these signs to let them know that there was chaos on earth. We are to be like the farmer looking at the fig tree. We have to know the signs. We have to follow what Jesus is doing. And it's maybe not in the great big things of the world, but it's what is Jesus doing with you and with me? We're not asked to solve the problem of Palestine. We're not asked to solve the problem of Ukraine. Unless you're in the diplomatic corps and I don't know it. We're asked to be who we are here. To know the signs. We are told that things will not be good. And in your life, they may be chaos at the minute. We are told that things were not always going to be easy. And I can look at the political landscape of this country. And as an outside observer, I can see it is chaos. But God is in control. God knows what he's doing. The difference that we have as Christians is that we have hope. St. Francis had hope. The first Advent candle we lit represents hope. This is not, oh, I hope so. I really hope so that this will happen. This is a certainty for us. The hope that we have is an assurance. We were saying to him, blessed assurance. We have this blessed assurance. When we're with Jesus, and Jesus in us, we have this hope. This hope that God is in control. This hope that Jesus is coming again, and the hope that he will bring us hope. Do you believe it? You say it every Sunday in the creed. And we also announce that Christ has died, Christ has risen. Christ will come again. What are we to do? What are we to do as we wait for the coming of Jesus in the second time? How are we to keep alert? The simple answer is keep on going. Keep on doing what you're doing. But one thing that we need to do, well it's actually a number of things, and you're doing one this morning, is to come and worship. Second one is to study your scriptures, because as the farmer knew the fig tree, we are to know Jesus. And the only way we really get to know Jesus is by studying our Bible, by coming to church, listening to sermons, listening to podcasts. We are to keep praying, to keep praying that we will keep in line with what God wants us to do. Like Francis, keep going. You know what you have to do in your family, in your community, in your church, in your work. But I want to set an Advent challenge for you. I may have spoken about this one before, I can't remember. But Mother Laurie read a book one time called The 15 Minute Revolution. She said it changed her life. The premise of this book was 
when you wake up in the morning, you pray and say to God, I want to give you 15 minutes of my life today to do whatever you want. Go ahead, inconvenience me. 15 minutes. Laurie did that on the first day when she was up in Johnstown doing this exercise. She saw a, what looked like a bag of clothes in the van shop just outside the church. And she thought nothing about it. But she kept hearing prompting go to that bag of clothes. It turned out to be a woman curled up in the corner of the van shop. The lady didn't know where she was, she didn't know her name, she knew nothing. She had blue eyes. And Laurie could not get out of her where she had come from, where she was going, she was just in this bad shell. A heap of clothes. So she brought her into the church and gave her food and drink. And then she phoned the police station. Said, I find someone. The only thing I can tell you about her is she's got blue eyes. And a couple of hours later, she got a phone call from this lady's son. The lady had been in an institution and had managed to get out, but she had no memory of where she came from. And the police officer said, does she have blue eyes? And Laurie said, yes. So they came. And the mother, when she saw her son, just cried out his name and ran over and hugged him. Laurie could have just walked past and said, no, not today. But God had said to her, go and help that person. Okay, so last Tuesday, when I thought of doing this, actually it was Monday night, last Tuesday, I said, okay God, let's, let's, we're going to challenge everybody to do this 15 minutes. The next morning, Laurie was up at 6.30 because in St. John's, on Giving Tuesday, they were going to give everybody breakfast in the middle of the street as they went to work. They stood at the street corners and when the lights stopped them, they ran out the windows and said, here's some breakfast. We're giving it away on Giving Tuesday. The night before, Laurie said to me, I can't find my phone. And Laurie loves taking photographs. And you probably, those who follow St. John's Facebook know there's lots of photographs. So I got a phone call at 7 o'clock. I was still in bed. Can you come over and take photographs? Because I can't find my phone. Grumpy Alistair got out of bed. And said, God, why did I say to do this? So I got up. I was freezing. And I was grumpy the whole time. So don't be afraid to be grumpy when you have to do this 15 minutes. But do what God asks you to do. Go ahead, God. Inconvenience me during Advent. See what happens. Come next week and tell us your story. But whatever you do, be alert. Keep alert and keep holy. Amen. We are going to affirm our faith and we're going to affirm that Jesus Christ is coming again in glory to judge the living and the dead. Let us stand and affirm our faith. That's on page two of your worship bulletin. We say together. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came, he came down, down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. 
and in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is rich and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, we pray for the people and nation of Ukraine, we pray for Israel, and we pray for Gaza. We pray for those who choose to serve in the military, police, and fire departments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our presiding bishop, assisting bishop, bishop elect, and, for all, and Alistair and Deacon Debbie, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our president Joseph, our governor Kathy, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the town, for this town of Waynesburg. For every city and community, and for those who live in them, especially those who will be celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. suffering, especially for those in need of healing in their families, Abigail, Alan, Amanda, Ashley, Bart, Brenda, Camille, Cheryl, Chris and Benny, Christy, Cindy, Pauline, Deacon Debbie, Debbie and Caleb, Diane, Donald, Doug, Ed, Epi, Batten, Frank and Peg, Gloria, Jake, Jaden, Jody, Judy, Judy, Kathy, Keith, Kim, Linda, Marge, Maria, Mary, Max, Mickey, Midge, Neil, Paul, Sharon, Sue, and Tristan. Are there others? We pray for those expecting babies. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them. 
Let there be more homes to meet the needs of foster children. Let us pray for the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in your compassion protect us, O Lord, by your grace. Lord have mercy. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord our God. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon all they turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We have already confessed our sins. So, the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Always so with you. Let's share one another the sign of God's peace. church. I pray that you will keep him going in the place that you want him to hold. It is a wonderful thing to celebrate with someone their birthday and I pray that you will bring blessings to him and keep him safe. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. There are a lot of sign-up sheets at the back uh, for readings, for lessons and carols and for catering and so forth so have a look at the back uh, if you need to sign up for anything thank you to everyone who helped last sunday after the service to put up our advent stars uh, it's always a wonderful feature to have these and i love it when the heat is turned on and they begin to rotate and shine as they do i hope that the prophecy just doesn't come true today that the stars will fall from the heavens so we Hope that it will stay up <laughs> for a few more weeks anyway. But uh, thank you to everyone. It's wonderful to see everybody working together on this. And if you saw our Facebook page, you'll see some photographs that Colleen took. Colleen, you have your fire practice? Yep, this Tuesday, 7 o'clock. Okay. This one at 7 o'clock. Okay. Uh, weather permitting? Yes. Okay. Hopefully, we'll still just go. We'll so go anyway, <laughs> yes. We started our Advent study on hymns this morning at 9 o'clock. Uh, Logie Comes with Flies Descending was the first one. Next Sunday we're looking at On Jordan's Banks, the Baptist Cry. So if you're interested in finding out a little bit more about the hymns, uh, next Sunday we're looking at that. I will be sending out uh, information about it, a YouTube link to it. If you're interested, Please let me know, uh, and I'll add you to the list. We meet in in the office in the basement of the parish hall, um, and today was was really good. And I felt wow, we're really singing what we studied this morning, and it was good to do that. So if you want to find out a little bit more about the hymns that we sing, especially during Advent, that's what we're doing. There are lots of events coming up, and one of them is the Ladies Auxiliary Dinner. Heather, can you speak to that? Thursday night at the, what they used to call the Tree Farm, the Settles Hill Banquet Facility. 
at 5.30. Um, if you haven't already responded, catch me today or send me a text or an email. We can uh, add you to our reservation list. Okay. Are there any other announcements? Judy. Um, on Monday, a week from tomorrow, December 11th, we're going to be meeting at Ferris Hall to make the greens that we use to decorate the church. And um, we'll do that at 10 o'clock. If you'd like to help, please let me know. Uh, it doesn't take that long if we have four or five people. So, uh, what time's that? 10 o'clock, oh, a week from tomorrow. Okay. The 11th. Okay. Monday. Monday. And um, bring um, some uh, garden nippers. You need a hoe? No. Thank you. Uh, garden nippers, and I would suggest to bring gloves so you don't get covered with stuff, but mostly bring yourself. Okay. Thank you. I love the garden nippers we call in second service. We're very French. One thing I did forget to thank everybody for was on Giving Tuesday, we set, someone had given us a donation to raise $2,000 on Giving Tuesday. We did reach that amount. I'm not sure exactly how much we raised because some people were sending checks and we will not get them until today. But thank you very much for those of you who contributed to that. That brings our total, we were at 531,000. That should probably bring us up to 535,000 if you add the extra 2,000. I would like to see us up to 550,000 before Christmas in our $1 million campaign to restore the church. It's a wonderful effort from everyone. One thing we did learn about Facebook is that we are not sharing posts. If you are on Facebook, can you please follow the church's Facebook? Then when we put a post up, you share that. That's the way it gets out. Uh, there's no point just putting up something on Facebook and only 25 people. Mike, you want to say something? No. Okay, how are you going to say So, please do that. And also, if you're sharing in that way, why not share with somebody else about our fundraising campaign? Somebody, a friend of yours said, that we're raising funds. Can you come and help us? Can you join with us on this journey to restore this building? We don't know what's going to happen. They may give us something. But we do it with hope. And we do it with grace. But please share the need that we have in restoring this building. I think I've said enough. I said too much. An offer three sentence. For all things come of thee and of thine own have we given thee. And our offer three number is 542. In the I can't even see the blue head thank you.
For the season of Advent, we're going to use Eucharistic Prayer B, which you will find on page two. Sorry, page three of our version bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We will lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give us thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs of him of everlasting life. That when he shall come again in great power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold, behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. After supper he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. And please join me, by him, him and with him and in him, him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, Spirit all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, our Passover, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the peace. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Let me quickly explain, we give communion in three ways. One is just to receive the bread. Second one is, I will intent, and then give it to you, and you do the Episcopal pinch to receive it from me. The third way is to receive the bread, and then also to receive the wine from the chalice, which is falling. If you don't know what to do, follow the person in front. <laughs>
Prayer is on page four for worship bulletin. Let us pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, you have nourished us for the body and blood of your Son, who is the true fruit of life. You are sharing in this holy sacrament. Teach us to judge wisely earthly things and all our heavenly power. We ask this to our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We finish with Advent closing acclamations. Let's really call this out because we're really saying, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. With love and compassion, come, come Lord Jesus. Jesus. With judgment and mercy, come, come Lord Jesus. Jesus. In power and glory, come Lord Jesus. In wisdom and truth, come, come Lord Jesus. Today is our healing service, so if you want some healing prayer, please stay afterwards. I will not be greeting people at the door, I will stay here so that people can come forward to the communion rail to receive prayer. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Our final hymn is hymn number 68. The blue hymn will be stand to sing. Yeah.